up y'all? So today I'm finally going to be redoing Sadie's cage. We're going bioactive. All of my other tanks are on bioactive at this point. She's the only sterile tank I have left. So I basically have everything that I need for the most part. Um, I went to an expo a couple weeks ago and that's mainly where I like to get my supplies from. It's cheaper there. Um, and then everything is pretty much in one place. But I am about to make a run to the pet store. So just to get a few more products. And then also go to uh, a home improvement store to grab a couple of um, plants as well. Everything else is at the crib. So hopefully this will be a short shopping trip. Um, I'm really excited. I, I know that she's been dying in this lackluster cage that she's in now. So I'm really hoping um, she'll enjoy it when I'm finished. So let's get into this video all right i'm back and now i have everything i need in order to make this build possible i'm just going to go through everything that i got just to show you guys what we're going to be working with today so let's go ahead and start out with this plant right here so i've never had a plant like this in one of my bioactive builds but i'm very excited about it i love how plant like it is um don't really know if that makes sense um but yeah i just I don't know I just love the aesthetic of it so I really hope that it actually works in my new setup so that's that plan now let's go with the holy grail of all plants that I have used in a bioactive setup and that is the golden pothos this guy has not failed me yet it is a hardy sturdy plant it will not treat you wrong and I just love how broad these leaves are look how huge those leaves are it's going to provide great cover for my snake. I I can't stress this plant enough. It's a great plant to have in your in your bioactive terrariums. Now, next, the creeping fig. I'm very excited about this plant and here's why. Um, if you've ever seen these guys actually outside, um, they're amazing. I've seen them take over a complete building. So I will say they can grow like weeds. But I'm excited about having this in my terrarium because I want it to take over the background and kind of just make the background look more realistic and you know just more a part of the actual tank itself now let's go ahead and go down to the substrate what my plant's going to be growing in right so abg mix this stuff this is what i use for my bioactive bills it's it, it's great it has all the good nu nutrients in it if you want to know more about abg mix uh go look it up i'm really not sure of the breakdown of what's in here anymore i do know you got some smagnum moss so um some horticulture charcoal, and that's about all I remember to be honest. Some soil, different types of things like that. So this bag is about four quarts, and I'm going to be using three quarts of it. I mean, three bags of this, um, in order to fill up our tank. I will say, when it comes to the ABG mix, I highly recommend Josh's Frogs brand. However, when I was buying some more mix, I just couldn't find any at the expo at the time so i'm just going with that unbranded one but if you can get your hands on some josh's frogs i highly recommend it and the only reason i'm recommending this one in particular is because this is just what i have experience with so this is what all of my other plants are working off of and they look great in my other terrariums so i like to mix my abg mix with some eco earth um so these are the bricks of it um you can get the loose fiber whichever you prefer i just like going this route because it's cheaper i'm always down to save a buck so um i usually hydrate maybe one brick we'll see throughout the bill how much i end up using um, and then adding that with my abg mix next if you can get your hand on some sphagnum moss that's what i use keep in mind the abg mix does have some in there already but i usually add, like to add some more so i'll be using all of this bag Unfortunately, I wasn't able to buy any more Smagnum Moss today. For some reason, my Lowe's was out of it, and I just didn't feel like going to any other stores. So hopefully this will be enough. If not, it's not a big deal to go buy some more in the near future. Next, let's see. Next, we got our cocoa chip bedding. So I like to add mulch in my setups. Um, I think it's really preference. I don't think anything says that you need mulch. I just like the texture it adds. Do keep in mind when you are adding mulch to your terrariums that you think of your snake's comfort, especially snakes, because they spend so much of their time on top of this bedding and you don't want anything that's really hard with rough edges that's going to really irritate them. So I like how soft the cocoa chips seem to be. And um, since I've newly learned that information, I will be adjusting some of my other snake tanks 
in order to make sure that there's a no discomfort there for them. Next, you got your leaf litter. Um, so this is gonna help, you know, your microfauna in particular. They're gonna break this stuff down. It's gonna provide hiding spaces for them. So you can go out and get your own leaf litter. These are just leaves that I happen to have bought. These are Southern Magnolia leaves. And I mean, we got so many Magnolia trees down here. I could really just go collect some of these and boil them down myself. But um, if you do buy them, it doesn't really matter as far as what type you buy. And these are my isopod cultures. So I have two isopod cultures. The first one here in my hand is my giant orange. I also have some dwarf whites. I do want to get some more isopods in the future. I don't know why I'm kind of obsessed with watching them breed, but that's the thing for me. So um, I also had these things speeded, seeded with springtails so that I don't have to buy all this separately. Um, if this is your first buy, yes, I highly recommend buying microfauna. And it will save you money in the long run if you breed these guys yourself. I will make a future video about that, so do stay tuned um, and look out for that video. But just to show you what some of these guys look like, let me see if I can get one of them out of here. So I'm using the giant orange um, in particular because they're bigger than the dwarf whites. And so they're able to break up that bigger poop that you would see left by a snake. Um, and I'm not using these guys in my crested gecko enclosure, for example. I don't want him to eat them. But also because his, smoop, his poop is smaller, um, I don't need such a larger isopod to get the job done. Let me see if I can get one of these guys on my hand for you. Boop. And he just fell right into the floor. Okay. You guys look like... I mean, he's, he's just a giant isopod. You might have you called them roly polies. Um, so there's just different species. This one in particular is the giant orange. So we'll put that guy back up. And moving on to some things that I already own. Um, but just to mention them just so you don't forget about them. Do keep in mind you will need some hides. Haven't really decided which hides I'm going to be using but I already own them. So these were not new purchases. And don't forget that you still need a water dish. So I will be using a water dish. Don't forget your heat source as well especially if you're starting from the ground up here and I will mention as far as my tank goes I will not be doing a false bottom I have done false bottoms on my other tanks I'm just choosing not to do that this time I don't really care for them to be honest because I like to use heat mats and I just find that it makes using a heat mat very difficult I, I do not like having to put my heat mats on the side of my tanks and so um yeah, I won't be using one. So I don't know exactly how that's gonna work out. If it doesn't work out, I'll give you an update in a future video. And I might even make a video comparing the pros and cons of doing a false bottom and not doing a false bottom. All right, so this is the enclosure we're working with. Just a little standard Exoterra. Cleaned it out as best as I could. Got a little substrate stuck at the bottom, but that's not a big issue. And here's the background. So we got a planter over there, a planter over here, and um, the background is from a previous build, so that's why it looks all funny. But we're gonna work with it the way that it is. Okay guys, now it's time for the fun part of the build, actually doing the build. Um, so first you're gonna start off with your substrate, of course. You can see from the smaller monitor that I did end up mixing all of my substrate in a huge tub. So I did three bags of ABG mix, one brick of Eco Earth, and my Smagnum Moths. Of course, you can do as little or as much substrate as you want based on the depth that you're trying to provide. And also keep in mind that you do not want your substrate to be as wet as mine. That was not my intentions. Um, you do want it to be saturated, but not dripping wet running like you see mine doing on the screen. That was honestly an uh, accident. I didn't end up, I didn't mean to put that much water into my mixture. Now I'm just adding my cocoa chip fibers. Again, this was absolutely optional. I just decided to do this because I like the texture and the aesthetic that it provides. And it even, even provides a little bit of hiding for my microfauna. So it, it all ends up being a win-win scenario. And I'm just mixing that up really well so that I can get it evenly distributed throughout the substrate.
And now I'm just adding in my hides. So I'm starting out with this plastic half log that I'm putting in the middle of the enclosure so that it gets kind of a good heat variance. And I'm basically trying to bury it. That way my snake can feel like she is underground when she's in this enclosure. And so I'm just semi burying it with my hands. And now I'm going to be adding a hide to the right. So this is just a plastic rock looking hide. And this is going to be on the cold side of the enclosure because my heat pad is actually on the left of the enclosure. And guys, do ex excuse my arm. I did not realize it was blocking the view of the camera this much when I was filming. I was kind of in an awkward position based on the positioning of the wall and my enclosure in the room. So it was kind of hard for me to film from anywhere else. So I hope it's not that big of a nuisance. So now it's time to start off with our plants. Um, so it took me a while to kind of get the feel for where I wanted to put them. Uh, so I ended up playing around with this a lot. But do not forget to thoroughly clean off your plants. Um, you don't want to transfer any bugs or bacteria or anything that may have been growing on it into your clean enclosure and then maybe get your snake sick and just any problem can arise from that. So make sure you clean off the foliage and the root system um, very thoroughly with some water. And I did end up breaking that bigger pothos plant down into three smaller plants as you see here. And um, just I just played with the placement a lot until I finally got it looking the way that I wanted it to. So this is the final layout that I ended up going with. You can see those pothos plants are kind of buried in location. That way it doesn't look too cluttered with them all in the same area. Um, so I have one to the right in the little corner. I have one in the planter to the left and I have one right up in the front. And um, then I have that grassier looking plant right in the middle and our creeping fig is in the planter hanging to the right. And I'm just washing off the plants just to get all the dirt and stuff off so they look a little bit better. So you could have done this at an earlier step, um, but you wanted to make sure that you don't forget to add your leaf litter. Again, this is going to provide food and hiding for your microfauna um, so that they can break it down, provide nutrients to your substrate, and then the plants take up those nutrients and it's just a completing cycle. Again, you can add any kind of leaf litter that you like. These just happen to be southern magnolia leaves and you do not have to purchase leaf litter. You can definitely go in your yard. Um, rake up some leaves and boil them down so they're, that they're sterile and then add them to your enclosure. And now I'm just kind of adding like a hardscaping element. Um, this is just a little piece of wood um, and I'm trying to put it in a position where it doesn't really move that it has great stability so that when my snake is on top of it she's not toppling over with it and I don't want it squishing any of the plants and kind of sucking the life out of them. So I'm just kind of squeeze it against a, a spot so that it doesn't move. And now it's time for me to add our little cleanup crew. So again, I'm using Dwarf White and Giant Orange Isopods, and both of them are seeded with springtails, so there are also springtails in there. And generally you wanna let a tank cycle before you um, add your snake back. Um, I didn't actually do that, and it, I didn't really get any ill effects from it, but if you want your microfauna to really thrive prior to putting your snake in there, you definitely want to let them sit for a few weeks before you add your snake back. And then this is our completed con enclosure here. So I'm just giving you a little pan of what everything looks like. Of course, it may look a little cluttered. The enclosure is not, um, it's equivalent to about a 40 gallon um, she will need something bigger in the near future and I'm really excited to get her something bigger But this is what we have now. Um, I do feel like she likes it. I think if she feels very secure in it She has a lot of hiding spots and since moving her into this 
different enclosure, this renovated enclosure. She is way more active than she was in her sterile tank. So that's very exciting. She does climb a lot and everything like that. And in terms of her water dish, um, generally for a snake her size, she might want a water dish a little bit bigger. She doesn't really soak as much. And so I, you know, felt like I could forego a huge water dish until I get her a bigger enclosure. But that will come with the tank upgrade as well so that she can do a full body soak if she so pleases to. And that's it guys. Don't forget to lock up, take a look at your hard work and admire all of it. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for my next video and I will see you next time. Thank you.